Hello everybody and welcome to Aaron Church Online. My name's Becca and I lead the church with a fantastic group of people. We're normally meeting together in a school hall, 400 of us, and we can't do that right now. So for now, welcome to Aaron Church Online. We're so pleased you're here. Whoever you are, wherever you come from, welcome. Here at Aaron Church, we are passionate about our local community, which is why we run the Wickbourne Centre and the Play Centre Nursery and the Preschool, Aaron Youth Projects and various children's and youth activities and the Cap Debt Centre. But we would love to invite you to an Alpha course, an opportunity to learn about the Christian faith in an informal environment from the comfort of your own home. To find out more about the Alpha course or any of the things that we run in the community, go to aaronchurch.com. Everybody and welcome to Aaron Church Online. Today is the first time that there will be some in-person meetings at Whitbourne, but you may not be able to be there for many different reasons. So we want to say a huge welcome to you today. We are so pleased that you can join us. Today we're starting a whole new series called Review and we want to look at the story of Joseph in Genesis and we want to look at the things that we have been through as a church, as individuals, as a nation. We want to look at those things and the things that we can bring out of it that we can learn from the last few months. So we'll be looking at that together and we've got Joe, who's going to be talking to us. We've got Ben Ansel, who we have a conversations with. And Poppy and the Play Centre children are going to be doing time for fun. We also have communion right at the very end. So make sure that you have some bread and wine with you. So we're going to worship together. So let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and into our rooms right now. Father God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you that wherever we go, you are with us. Whether we go uh, to the darkest place, you still are there. And I thank you, Father. We want to worship you today and we want to lift you high in our our hearts, in our minds, in our homes. God, we thank you for who you are. Amen.
driven by kings We cover the mountains The valleys below With the prince of your mighty ways All treasures of wisdom And things to be known Are hidden inside your ways In this fortunate turn of events Ask me to be your friend. Yeah, you asked me to be your friend. For you, you are my first, you are my last, you are my future.
from the nursery and today we have us with us is Superhero. I'd be a superhero. What's your name? Stop. Your phone was on loud. And Daniel the Ninja. Daniel the Ninja. And we have Maya the Princess. Maya the Princess and the Bella Superhero. So today guys we are looking at the book Genesis and it's all about Joseph. Have you ever heard of Joseph before? Yeah. We've done lots of singing and dancing to him, haven't we? It's great songs. And Joseph, listening to Maya? Joseph wore a really, really colourful coat. And he wore this coat because his dad, called Jacob, gave him this coat, okay? So, but J um, Joseph had lots of brothers. He had 12 brothers. What? I know, that is a lot of brothers, isn't it? 12 brothers, that's a lot. What? Because his dad just, he loved children. And then, so Jacob only chose Joseph to have a really colorful coat. And his brothers were a bit gel. They didn't like that he was wearing this coat, okay? They was like, why haven't I got a coat? It would be like, if I was to give Amaya a sweet right now, you would be like, why haven't I got a sweet? You know? Yeah. Yeah, you would be annoyed, wouldn't you? Yeah. But, so Jacob and um, his brothers, they didn't really like Joseph because they were jealous of him. Is that kind? Yeah. No. No, it's not kind, is it? How do you think Joseph felt? Sad. Yeah. yeah, I think he felt a bit sad too. So, we're going to do an experiment on Joseph's um, the colours of Joseph's coat. So what I'm going to do, yeah. right, is I'm going to pour a bit of water, hot water, so don't touch it, in here, and I've got all these colours, and we're going to see the colours that Joseph's coat was, okay? Yeah? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a bit of this hot water in here. Are we ready? was just like the colours of Joseph's coat. So his brothers weren't happy because they were like, I want that coat too. What do you think? I don't know. Well, it's like purple, isn't it? Purpley blue. Isn't yeah. it cool? What colours can we see? Um, you see green, red, and yellow, and um, green. Who likes Joseph's coat? Me! Me. It's so cool, isn't it? Everybody and welcome to Conversations With. And today we are having a great conversation with Ben Ansel. And Ben, what we're talking about today is what have we been through um, as people through this last you know year or so? What have we been through? What what do you think we've been through like emotionally? Oh, good question, Becca. Hello, everyone. Um I, I just I think probably first off to say that pe we've all been through similar but also different things. Um, I think for me it's probably not necessarily just about emotions. It's about sort of spiritually and physically and um, uh, and practically as well. What have we been through? But I think I would say for us as a family, we probably just had to do a whole load of relearning. So life um, as it was before lockdown was busy but also quite structured the kids had their school I had work we had church on a Sunday we had midweek life pods um, and within like days all of that stuff just got completely thrown up in the air and rather than being thrown up in the air and kind of falling down some of it just stayed up in the air for ages like when will church go back will we have a church when we go back when will, when will life pods go back what will they look like um, will my kids play football for the rest of this year or not? So often when you throw things up, when you're in control, I think it feels like a positive thing because you've gone, I'm going to shake things up in my life, but I want them to land. And I think they're going to land like this, this and this. And obviously with COVID, 
we had that announcement from Boris Johnson and it was kind of like, oh, well, we'll, well what's going to happen next? And so I think for us, we just had to relearn a whole load of stuff. So if I think about emotionally, I'd say that as as a family, we're very outgoing. We do a lot of social, we do a lot of socialising. So the boys and Em and I were all getting our emotional sort of um, well being and uplifting and sort of strength, if you like, from the social interactions we had, whether that was us going for dinner with friends or the boys going into school and meeting their friends or being able to meet family. And probably we didn't appreciate that, but that was all giving us our kind of emotional stability and framework. And then all of a sudden, all that got taken away. And so we had to relearn, I think, as a family, how do we provide that just for each other, just the five of us, <laughs> pretty much in the same house 24-7? You know, how do we provide each other's emotional health and strength when we don't have an outlet for it um, anywhere else? So I think emotionally, that's what we've that's what we had to do, particularly in those times where we couldn't see anyone. And what that's you, sorry. Yeah, what do you think about, uh, what have you learned then spiritually? Because you mentioned that there's so much different stuff that we've been through. What do you think spiritually you've been through? Uh, for me personally, spiritually, I think it's been a really positive time and probably for the family as well, because we had to, again, look inwards because we didn't have that support network and, and in some ways, you realise how much you take that for granted. So being able to just pitch up to TLA on a Sunday and worship with 300 people or receive really great kind of teaching just or midweek groups or whatever it is, you just all that went. And so for us, over a period of time, we had to work out what our sort of spiritual practices were as a family. And I know previously I've spoken about Sabbath, and that's been a really amazing development in our spiritual journey as a family over the last year and um, particularly since September so setting aside that that day in the week usually a Saturday to be with each other as a as a family to share meals together to talk about what we're grateful for what we're thankful for to read a psalm together that kind of that's been a really precious thing that we never would have done pre-lockdown because we were just here there and everywhere and um yeah, so that's been that's been amazing. I think personally for myself, I think the journey through lockdown has been a continuation of a spiritual journey through lockdown has been a continuation of a general journey that I, that I was on, which is I really need to develop a personal relationship with Jesus so that um, I don't rely on the crutch of church or the um, uh, you know not saying that's a bad thing necessarily, but just building up the strength of that relationship for myself. Uh, and I ha that kind of got accelerated because all that other stuff did get taken away. So it was, you know, I was relying um, more on, you know, do I want to have quiet times? Do I want to listen to worship music? You know, no one's going to provide that for me. So, yeah, that was that that's kind of been our our spiritual journey, really. I mean, it's so important, isn't it, to have discovered that treasure in this time? What about uh, practically and physically? What have you been through, do you think? Yeah, I think, I think, like um, many families, probably, which is our perspective, we we tried we sort of trying to establish the routine, the routine that works. Um, you know, alongside all those different restrictions and variations in who we can see and who we can't see and what we can do, just trying to establish a really kind of strong routine that works for us as a family, and and also. Um, it sounds a bit of a but trying to love ourselves a bit more. So not putting too much pressure on ourselves as parents or as individuals or as a family, really just trying to journey through really and, and try and do that uh, all together. So trying to recognize each other's needs a bit more communicating has been the main, one of the main things that we've really had to major on as a family is, and particularly as parents, again, like listening more to each other, listening more um, to our children, understanding the context for their ups and downs and, and, and trying to understand the context for our own ups and downs and mood swings and stuff like that. Um, and then there's been uh, Emily and I both uh, and and through the boys as well have been really strong on doing exercise is a very practical thing, I think, for all of us. Uh, we got a dog at the beginning of, of lockdown and being out in the countryside has been really amazing. Having that that time in God's creation, but also doing a physical activity together, 
done lots of running when we can. Uh, we've been, we went to the beach a lot last summer and did swimming. So being outside, being active has been a one practical thing that we've, that we've tried to do every week, just, to, just again, to impact positively our mental health. That's so uh, good to hear you talking like that because it's so important that we, when we go through things, we do talk about them and we talk about what we've been through because it's part of the process, isn't it, of life and living and learning. But thank you so much, Ben, for sharing all of your thoughts with us and uh, have a really great day. You too. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Hey Church, so great to be able to connect with you. We are looking at our series at the moment, Review, looking at the life of Joseph. The story of Joseph can be found in the book of Genesis in the Bible. It's an easy book to find because it's right at the beginning. Between chapters 37 and 50, we have this epic story. It is like a box set. And I would really encourage you this week to spend some time reading that story. Just binge out on the story of Joseph. It has so much gold within it. But today we're going to be looking at the subject of what have we been through and reviewing what we have been through. And I'm going to jump right in to the end of Joseph's story in Genesis chapter 50 and I'm going to read from verse 19 bit of context here Joseph's father Jacob has died and his brothers now are terrified that Joseph is going to bring vengeance on them for the awful way that they have treated Joseph throughout his life but this is what happens when they come to Joseph in verse 19 he says don't be afraid am I in the place of God you intended to harm me but God intended it for good. Say with me, God intended it for good. Now you might feel really silly saying that in front of your family, sitting on your sofa, but just say it anyway, it feels good. God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph stayed in Egypt along with all his father's family. He lived 110 years and saw the third generation of Ephraim's children. You know, the most important things in life come through a process. We love the initiation and we love the destination. There's so much excitement around those things. What we tend to not be so keen on is the process that takes us from A to B. And yet anything that is of any sense of worth takes process and goes through a season of hiddenness, whether that is a baby in the womb of its mother or seeds in the ground waiting to burst into life and flourish, or whether it's the caterpillar in a chrysalis that is going to burst out and become a beautiful butterfly. There is a process to everything that is of any value. And Joseph's life is a life of incredible process. It starts off in Genesis 37 with a promise. God tells him that he is going to be used to bring salvation and that God is going to raise him up to a place of prominence. But between the place of the promise and the eventual palace where he will be, there is a process that includes a pit that his brothers throw him into, a prosecution of rape falsely uh, from the place of slavery that he sold into, a prison cell where he languishes for three years before finally standing before Pharaoh and interpreting Pharaoh's dream. And between the place of our promise and the place of our purpose, there is a process that we need to go through. You know, Joseph's story didn't even really start in Genesis chapter 37. It actually starts in Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says that God sees the earth and it is without form and it is void. And God speaks and says, let there be light. And light is slung into existence. And it says that God separates the light from the darkness and saw that it was good. That word good in Genesis chapter 1 verse 4 is the same word that Joseph uses in Genesis chapter 50 when he says God meant it for good. What was good? Well, the light was good. Absolutely. We'd all think the light is good, right? But God says that the light is good, but also that the darkness is good. And the 
absence of light and the fact that there is darkness does not mean that God not, is not right in the middle of some of those darkest, most difficult seasons that we go through. The world is still beginning to emerge from this global pandemic. And I don't know what you've been through. I don't know how difficult it may have been. You may have lost loved ones. You may have lost a job. You may have found yourself in places that you never thought that you would go through. It may have been dark, but I want to say to you that even in those dark moments, God is good. And this is what Joseph learns through the process. He learns that God was just as much with him when he was in the pit. God was just as much with him when he was in the prison. God was just as much with him in those moments as he was with him when he was in the palace. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work to good for those that are called according to God's purpose. So often we don't go, we aren't willing to go through the dark parts to get to the good part. So often we abort the mission and the plan that God has for our life because it just gets too difficult. And I just want to say to every teenager here listening to me, you may feel like your hormones are raging right now and it might feel like things are going crazy, things are breaking out on your face, all kinds of different things going on. Hold on because it will get better. Every marriage that might be struggling right now or relationship where you feel like I just can't get through the tension here. Hold on because you will get to the good part. You have to embrace those difficult moments, the resistance to grow into your purpose. Purpose will reveal your why, but process will reveal how God will get you to that place. So church, as we step into this next season, as we pray and hope that we are emerging into what is next, may we embrace the process and may we step into the destiny that God has for us. Every talk that I've ever heard about Joseph always focuses on the first 30 to 40 years of his life. But what the scripture tell us is that in this moment, he sees his children to the third generation and lives in the blessing and prosperity of God to the age of 110. May you know that your story is not over. You still have things to do, places to go, uh, promises to fulfill, and God will lead you into that. So as you step forward, may God bless you and may his face shine upon you. All my life I've been carried by grace Don't ask me how cause I can't explain It's nothing short of a miracle I'm here got some blessings that I don't deserve I've got some scars but that's how you learn it's nothing short of a miracle I'm here I think it over and it doesn't matter I know it comes from above I've got miracles and miracles Cause I'm miracles, count your miracles
So we want to take some time now to review, to have a look at the things that we have been through and to ask God to be part of that process and illuminate things that he wants to speak to us about and so that we don't carry on in life holding on to the things that we shouldn't hold on to and uh, having thought processes that are not good for us. And I think it would be really great if we could take communion together today. So I hope that you've got some bread and wine in your houses. Uh, we are going to remember what Jesus went through. We're going to remember the pain and the agony and all that he went through so that we could have life that is free from guilt, free from the wrong things that we do, free to love, free to be loved. And we're going to remember by taking bread and wine what Jesus did for us. And that whatever we go through, Jesus has both been through it and goes through it with us in the present. So I'm going to read from Luke because these are some of the words that Jesus spoke. And they're words of truth and they're words that bring life. So as we remember Jesus' death, we're going to remember the things that he spoke about says this in Luke 6. There's trouble ahead when you live only for the approval of others, saying what flatters them, doing what indulges them. Popularity contests are not truth contests. Look how many scoundrel preachers were approved of by your ancestors. Your task is to be true, not popular. For you who, already, for you who are ready for the truth, I say this. Love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer for that person. If someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff, live generously. Here's a simple rule of thumb for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you and then grab the initiative and do it for them. If you only love the lovable, do you expect a pat on the back? Run of the mill sinners do that. If you only help those who help you, do you expect a medal? Garden variety sinners do that. If you only give what you hope to get out of it, do you think that's charity? The stingiest of pawnbrokers does that, I tell you. Love your enemies, help and give without expecting a return. You'll never, I promise, regret it. Live out this God-created identity the way our Father lives towards us, generously and graciously. Even when we're at our worst, our Father is kind. Be kind. Don't pick on people, jump on their failures, criticise their faults, unless of course you want the same treatment. Don't condemn those who are down, that hardness can boomerang. Be easy on people, you'll find life a lot easier. Give away your life, you'll find life given back. Not merely given back, but given back with bonus and blessing. Giving not getting is the best way. Generosity begets generosity. We're going to remember how amazingly generous Jesus was, how he loved us by dying for us. And so if you have your bread, then we're just going to break it. Remember that Jesus' body was broken. He loved us so much that his body was broken for us. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that your body was broken for us. We thank you that your flesh was teared apart because you loved us. And we are so grateful to you for that, God. And then take the wine that reminds us of Jesus' blood poured out for us. And we say thank you, Jesus, for pouring yourself out for us. We say thank you, Father, for your amazing gift of life to us. And if you don't know Jesus today, I pray that you would have a sense of his love and his care for you, that you would know how much he loved you and that he died for you. So let's take bread and wine together.
Thank you so much, everybody, for being with us today. It's been good to be together. We are meeting now in person at Wickbourne. So if you would like to come along, then please do go to aaronchurch.com slash events and book your ticket. You can get them every Monday morning at 8 a.m. So we would love to be with you. But if you can't come, then let's join together online next week. Thank you so much for all that you're giving with money and being on the generosity journey with us. We are so grateful for that. And we just hope that you have the best week next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.